Katya team in this multi-stage rocket and I guarantee your team's sprint planning will be a breeze. You may ask what does this rocket have to do with your team's sprint planning? Meet me on the other side and I'll show you how this rocket can help you and your team in improving your sprint planning. How do you do your sprint planning? Are you struggling to keep your team members interested in coming to the sprint planning every sprint? You need a structure to make your sprint planning highly productive event. You got to show them the value of the sprint planning event. Use the seven C's of sprint planning to keep your sprint planning on track and make it the most productive meeting for your team. The seven C's refer to close, confirm, capacity, consensus, commitment, communicate, and collect. Now, let me explain each of these C in detail to help you make your sprint planning the most productive event. So first C is close. Close referring to closing your current sprint, the sprint that you are just finishing. You need to make conscious decisions on any of the leftover stories, the stories that the team did not complete during the sprint that you are just completing. So make conscious decisions about those stories and close your current sprint in preparation for the next upcoming sprint. The second C refers to the confirmation. Confirm as a team with the product owner that the stories that are at the top of the product backlog are still her highest priorities. These are the stories that the team would have discussed in the earlier backlog refinement and those are the stories that are ready for the team to take into the next sprint. But before you take it into the next sprint, confirm with your product owner that they are still her priority stories. Number three is capacity. Now this is referring to the capacity of the team. How many stories can you take into the sprint? How many stories we should load into the sprint backlog? To answer this question, you will need to know the velocity of the team as well as the capacity of the team. Capacity of the team for this sprint. In order to find out the capacity of your team for this coming sprint, you have to ask them. You have to find out details about their day offs, holidays, planned vacations, any company-wide events, anything and everything that will take time away from the team, time away from the sprint. And that will have a direct impact on your team's capacity. Now here, what I'm looking for is not the hours, but rather we are looking for, hey, do we have a 80% capacity? Do we have a 100% capacity for this upcoming sprint? So consider all the day offs, vacations, company-wide events, any holidays, and find out what is that capacity. Now you'll apply that capacity to the velocity that you have found out. To help you answer these questions easily, I strongly recommend you set up a team calendar where each team member keeps his or her time of request. This team calendar becomes your go-to artifact to answer the capacity questions. In essence, what you're looking to determine is how big is your bucket? How many stories can you fit into this sprint? How many story points can we take into this upcoming sprint? The size of this bucket is determined by your historical data as in your velocity and your future forecast as in capacity of the team for the next few weeks. 
Combine these two numbers to identify the size of your bucket. That determines how many story points you can take into this upcoming sprint. The next C is consensus. Team needs to get to a consensus. Based on the discussion on capacity and using velocity as a guideline, the team should be pulling top priority items from product backlog into the sprint backlog. How many stories to load into the sprint will depend on the capacity and velocity as we discussed earlier. As a team, you need to come to a consensus as to how many stories, how many story points are feasible in this upcoming sprint. Once the team has a consensus on the number of stories, story points, and what stories to load, the team commits to them. Team commits those stories, story points to the upcoming sprint. These stories are committed to this upcoming sprint and becomes part of the sprint backlog. If you remember, one of the scrum value is commitment. Through sprint planning, team commits to and promises to do everything in their power to drive these stories to completion through this upcoming sprint. This is where you can mark the completion of your sprint planning event. So if you look at the sprint planning event itself, there are two parts, part one and part two. So that, that is what I'm saying here, the part one can be marked as completed here. Part one is where you need the team present in the room when we are doing the sprint planning. So in other words, when this part one is completed, the team can go back to their work environment and actually start working on them. What is in part two? Actually, the next two C's are in part two. The next two C's are more for the Scrum Master than the entire team. So that is why I'm saying when the part one is done, the team can go back to their work environment and start working on those stories. In part two, there are two activities that the Scrum Master can complete. As I mentioned earlier, when the part one is done, the team can leave, go back to their desk and start working on their stuff, their stories. So for part two, you don't need the entire team to be present while the Scrum Master is doing these activities. The first C in part two is communicate. Now that you have completed an awesome and highly productive sprint planning event, remember I'm talking about the part one, is complete, the Scrum Master should communicate to the stakeholders. Scrum Master can send out a communication as to what is in the scope for this sprint, what stories were completed, and what feature functionality the team is attempting to complete through this sprint. Scrum Master can also communicate the sprint goals. This will keep the stakeholders in the loop and they will know what to expect at the sprint review in a couple of weeks. Remember, one of the pillars of Scrum, transparency. So with this communication, we are being completely transparent as to what is loaded into the sprint and what they can expect on the other end of the sprint. The next C is collect. Collect as in task level details. I'm not a big fan on task writing, but if the team decided to capture the tasks under all the stories, then we need to collect them quickly. Collect them quickly into the tool where you are having your backlog. I generally advise the Scrum Master and the team to set a deadline here. For example, deadline could be by end of the day, we want everyone to have all their tasks into the tool where we are having the backlog. So by end of the day, they must enter all the tasks that they want to capture into the tool. Again, as I said, I'm not a big fan of task writing. This would feel like micromanaging the team. 
and that is one of the reason why I don't encourage writing the task level details and collecting them into the tool. Just stay at the story level and let the team members drive it as to what tasks they want to work on. They will figure it out as they are working on the stories. There you have it, my friends. The seven C's for making your sprint planning the most optimal event. Use these seven C's as you guide your team through the sprint planning. Now it's your turn. Use these seven C's during the next sprint planning event with your team. Let me know how it goes. Let me know which C among these seven C's intrigues you the most. Share your experience, learnings and comments with the community in the comments below.